Hello, I thought today I'd have a little go with the new sparklers sprays that That's Crafty are doing. They're their own range of sprays and at the moment they come in five colours which are red, green, lilac, pale gold and blue. In the bottle they look really quite pale and wishy-washy and you get a lot of settlement at the bottom. I shook this only about five minutes ago and I'm sure you can probably see that it's got a lot of settlement in the bottom again. So if you're using them I do suggest that each time you pick them up to use them you give them a really really good shake so all the stuff in the bottom mixes up. Don't just give them a good shake at the start of your project and think they're going to be okay because as I said five minutes ago I shook these and there's a lot of settlement again and if you don't shake them you won't get the depth of colour that you get with these on a black surface. As I said they look really pale and kind of vintagey and faded in the bottles but I've sprayed them all onto a little bit of black card. All I've done is prep this card with some black gesso like this was just a bit of cereal box that I've just given a couple of coats of the That's Crafty black gesso to prep it and then I've sprayed the sparklers. This is those ones out the way. This is the green spray and as you can say, see the colour in that is nothing like the colour you get on the black. If you spray these onto white you won't really notice they're there but onto a black gessoed surface they go a really lovely dark shimmery colour. This end I pulled the colour on really really thoroughly so you can see the kind of cover you get. This end I just spritzed it on really really lightly and I hope you can see how it looks. I'm moving it in front of the window so you should be able to see. That's as I said the green. This is the lilac. Again this end I really pulled it on and this end I just spritzed it on really really lightly. And again the depth of colour on that is really lovely. This is the blue, I mean, and this is nothing like that blue, is it? It's really, really dark. It's still a little bit wet here. Let's pick them up. This is the pale gold. I mean, it just looks like a kind of a murky yellow in there, but once it gets on a bit of black gessoed card, it looks really, really nice. And this is the red. I'll be having a go in a moment with a bit of a project with these. I've got a tag again that is prepped with the That's Crafty black gesso and then I've used the gesso quite thickly through one of the That's Crafty stencils. I use this one which is their large stencil number eight which is like a shell pattern and as I said I put the gesso on really thickly with a palette knife so I've got quite a bit of texture there and this again is the black gesso put through this stencil this is so dirty, I can't see what the number is on it. It's down this corner, and we scraped a bit. It's number five. So this is stencil number five, and I used it here. This is just black, thin, unfinished card. And again, I've put the gesso through really, really thickly with a palette knife and it's nearly dry now. I thought I could then give a comparison of how the sparkle sprays look with 
gesso over gesso and gesso over black unfinished card. I'm going to use the gesso over gesso first. All this is is one of the That's Crafty tags. It's grey board on one side and before I coat it with gesso, I'll get one to show you, hang on a sec. As I said, before I coat a dip with gesso, it is just um, finished whiteboard on one side. I had actually stuck some paper circles on it because this did start life as another project that I then forgot what I was going to do with it and sat in my drawer for ages. So I just got it out, coated it with some gesso and started again with it. I'm going to use the green spray on this. As I said, I'm going to give it a really, really thorough shake. And I'll put a little bit of scrap paper under my tag just to soak up the excess. If you wonder why I keep putting things down that way, it's because I used to use my camera in a different position and it used to film things facing this way and I haven't quite got used to it being the right way around yet. Just me being a bit of a numpty. I'll give it a thorough shake till all the sediment in the bottom is mixed up and then I'm going to pour this quite a lot over the part with the texture and lightly over the other bit. You can see it's picking up the shape of the gesso quite well. I hope it will give that a bit of a definition. Oh, it's actually picking up where my um, bit of die cut circle was stuck underneath as well. So that might be an added bonus on this tag when I get around to using it. I'm going to dry, I'm going to keep my heat gun moving. You can see the bits where I lightly spritzed it are already dry. The bits where I pulled it more heavily on the gessoed area is obviously taking longer because there's more liquid there. I have noticed when you use these, if you pull them heavily, it kind of separates. You can see in the bottom of this tub already it started to pull down the bottom. And it does this on the thing you're working on. So what you could probably do is, once it's got to a certain point, roll off the excess liquid on the top. And it would probably just dry it a little bit quicker. But it's drying quite quickly with the heat gun. And it has done what I hoped it would do. just get it thoroughly dry so it doesn't all run when I pick it up and this monitor is probably spots down here but still wet. I'm actually going to mop this corner because there's a lot of liquid. You see it's just mopped off clear. It hasn't taken any of the green off. It's just mopped the very light green liquid off it's in there to mix it. Let's dry now. Yes, what it's actually done is where the gesso is and there's a little dent in the middle of that where the liquid hit it now, it's pulled in there really, really deeply and you've got really dense colour. And in the little bit up here where I just spritzed it lightly, it's just given it a dappled colour. So you can get quite a good effect on these just by putting texture on there. I might actually just lay a little bit of the pale gold over that. Just very, very lightly. The further away you spritz these, the lighter mist you get. The closer you get, the heavier the mist. Like the dilution sprays used to be. If you wanted really dense colour, you could go really, really close with those. A 
this is giving a lovely two-tone effect on here. So that's the tag done with the two colours. You can see with the gold, it's really only hit the high spots and you've got the green left in the middle. Of course, when you just lay it flat and look at it with no light, it's it looks quite flat, but tweak it in the light and it looks really, really nice. I'm now going to have a go with the piece I cut to size for my journal. As I said, this is gesso in the raised area and this is just completely unfinished paper, apart from the smudgy area there where I've got a bit of gesso and wiped it off with a baby wipe. I think I'll try the lilac on this. Again, give it a really good shake. Long way away from mist. The closer you get, the heavier the colour. I've put quite a lot on this because I'm interested to see how it works on the unfinished card because I haven't actually tried it on naked card yet. The gesso area is reacting exactly the same as this. It's pulling in the dips and giving a darker depth of colour. And on the unfinished card it, it's going a lot lighter colour than it did on the gesso. Because here that was hot. Don't wave your finger around underneath the heat gun camera. I was just excited I wanted to point to it. This bit here where it's still wet, so be careful. It's really highlighted the gesso stencil with a different colour and the card underneath has got a more spotty effect and the gesso's picked up a mottled colour so it's quite nice for adding a different colour texture over gesso. I think I'll go over this little bit again with the power gold. This isn't quite dry so it'll be interesting to see if they mix or if they stay separate. I wonder what would happen if I spritz it with water. Does it just dilute it or will it make it run? Oh, it's running. Let me run it down. I'm going to have this as the bottom of my journal page. We'll try and get it to drip down. Oh, yeah, it's running down. to run more. Yeah. That's got some nice dribble going on there on that page. And chase that drip down to the bottom. very wet but that's given a nice effect where the colours have mixed here you've got a completely different effect to down here so that's the one with card un uncoated with anything and the gesso shaped and this is the gesso tag with the gesso shape again. I 
think there's a bit more of a shimmer on the untreated card than there is on the gesso because I think the background, the gesso background has muted the shimmer a little bit whereas the uncoated card is a bit more shiny but I really do like the effect you get over the gesso through the stencil here. That just adds a really nice textured background. As I said at the start, these are That's Crafty's own sprays and they come in five colours. Lilac, which is what I used here, and the green, which I used here, and the pale gold, which I overlaid on both of them. I haven't used the blue or the red here, but I do have the colour samples here. This is the red. Shouldn't have pushed that so hard, should I? And this is the blue. I'll be using these in a couple of projects over the upcoming months. Thank you for watching today.